Hello, gemstone hunter. What if that seemingly ordinary plant, one of those that sprout unbidden in the backyard, by the roadside, or in a vacant lot, is silently revealing something valuable hidden just below the ground? Indeed, while almost everyone passes by, nature may be waving a signal that few have learned to interpret. There are plants that can only survive in soils rich in certain minerals, such as iron, copper, or even traces of gold, and the curious thing is, that they make no fuss. They grow discreetly, like someone guarding an ancient secret. Those who observe carefully begin to notice strange patterns. Why does that species grow strong precisely where the soil seems poor? Why does it emerge isolated, resistant, where nothing else thrives? That's where common logic breaks down and curiosity takes the wheel. The experienced mentor would say that ignoring these clues is like throwing away a map before opening it. Most call it weeds, few call it a message. And it is precisely this difference in perspective that separates those who merely walk the earth from those who learn from it. If this idea has already given your mind that silent click, leave a like now, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Because from now on, you'll never look at a plant the same way again. And the next sign, might be just a few steps away from you. Imagine someone walking slowly through their own backyard, smelling the damp earth, listening to the rustling of leaves in the wind, unaware that the soil beneath their feet holds stories far older than any human construction. Nature, patient as a wise old man, rarely shouts. It whispers. Each leaf, each root, each plant that insists on growing where nothing else thrives acts as a silent word written on the ground. The attentive observer realizes that it is not just random growth, there is natural intention there. Over the centuries, the earth has learned to communicate with those who slow their pace and sharpen their gaze. While many see only green, others perceive patterns, repetitions, and small anomalies that awaken unsettling questions. Why is this plant here? Why only here? This type of questioning changes everything. It's almost like learning a new language, where the alphabet is roots, colors, and textures. When this perception awakens, the world ceases to be ordinary and becomes an open book, full of unread pages. Long before satellites, sensors, and sophisticated machines, ancient peoples already understood this silent dialogue between plants and soil. Experienced prospectors, explorers, and traditional communities observed the vegetation as if consulting a trusted oracle. Certain plants were associated with iron-rich soils, others revealed copper, manganese, or even gold. And this didn't come from guesswork, but from repetition over time. A wise mentor often reminds us that true knowledge is born from continuous observation, not haste. It was common for someone to notice that where a certain plant thrived year after year, the soil had something different, something hidden. This knowledge crossed generations, often passed down in simple conversations, in the shade of a tree. The curious thing is that, with the advancement of technology, this knowledge was almost lost, not because it was wrong, but because it seemed too simple. And it is precisely in this forgotten simplicity that a deeper understanding begins to reveal itself, preparing the eye to see the next sign that the earth insists on showing. There's a point where curiosity turns into revelation, and it's precisely here that the secret begins to take shape. Some plants aren't there by chance. They're called bioindicators, species that have developed the ability to absorb specific minerals from the soil and therefore only thrive where these elements exist in higher concentrations. To the untrained eye, it's just another resilient plant. For those who understand the code, it's like finding an arrow pointing downwards. Science confirms what ancestral observation already knew. Roots function as natural sensors, reacting to soil chemistry in a precise way. Iron, copper, nickel, and even traces of gold directly influence the growth, color, and strength of these plants. When someone learns this, something changes internally because the landscape ceases to be neutral. Every detail begins to matter. The plant stops being scenery and becomes a message. And the most curious thing is realizing that this signal was always there, just waiting for someone to ask the right question. The real plot twist emerges when you understand how often these signs are ignored in everyday life. 
How many times has someone pulled up a plant thinking it was just weeds, without realizing they were eliminating a valuable indicator of what lies beneath the surface? This is nature's kind of silent irony. While many clear the land to organize, they end up erasing clues that took centuries to form. An experienced mentor often says that the mistake is not in not knowing, but in not observing. These plants grow where the soil is hostile to other species, precisely because they feed on something no one sees. This creates strange patterns. Isolated growth, unusual resistance, leaves with different shades. When these signs repeat themselves, they cease to be coincidence. They become evidence. And it is at this moment that curiosity turns into respect for what previously seemed too simple. There are practical examples that help make this even clearer. In regions with iron-rich soils, certain plants exhibit darker coloration and vigorous growth, even in arid terrain. In areas with copper, some species develop thicker leaves or unusual structures. The attentive observer doesn't need expensive equipment to begin. Simply compare neighboring areas, noting where the plant appears frequently and where it simply doesn't exist. This simple exercise already trains the eye to see beyond the obvious. The wisdom here lies in combining science with patience. No rush, no impulsive conclusions. It's like assembling a puzzle where each plant is a piece. When several pieces begin to fit together, the subterranean history of the soil begins to emerge almost begging to be understood. And now comes an important detail. This type of knowledge shouldn't be kept to oneself. If this revelation has already made you rethink that plant growing in your backyard or by the roadside, leave a like now and comment below if you've ever seen a strange plant growing on its own. Sharing experiences broadens everyone's perspective. A wise mentor learns by teaching and teaches by learning from those who observe alongside them. Write in the comments what you've noticed in your area, because often the missing clue for someone is precisely in your own experience. And pay attention, because when you learn to decipher these signs, the next step isn't just seeing the plant, it's understanding what the soil is trying to tell you right below it. There comes a point when curiosity needs to turn into practice and interpreting the plant's signals is exactly that step. The first exercise for the attentive observer is learning to recognize species that prefer soils rich in certain minerals, such as iron, copper, or manganese. It's not about memorizing complicated names, but about noticing simple patterns. Plants that grow strong where the soil seems weak, species that appear in isolation as if they had chosen that specific spot. An experienced mentor usually advises starting with the basics, observe how often the plant appears, compare it to nearby areas, and notice if it insists on reappearing in the same place. When a plant ignores the difficulties of the environment, it's usually because it has found something there that others cannot access. This type of reading requires more attention than physical effort. It's almost a training in presence. The more you observe, the sharper your gaze becomes and the soil begins to speak more clearly. Another powerful indicator lies in the leaf color and plant structure. Unusual shades, darker leaves, reddish hues, or a different sheen can indicate chemical reactions between the plant and soil minerals. In iron-rich areas, for example, certain species exhibit a more intense, almost heavy green color. In soils mineralized with copper, thicker leaves or irregular growth may appear. A practical exercise is to photograph the plant at different times of the year and compare its appearance with the same species in another location. This simple habit reveals differences that go unnoticed in everyday life. The wise mentor teaches that comparison is a powerful tool because it transforms sensation into evidence. It's not about guessing, but about observing methodically. And when the signs begin to repeat themselves, the plant ceases to be merely a vegetable and becomes information. Roots also tell a profound story, even when they are not visible. Plants with long, deep roots are usually searching for something specific underground, such as minerals concentrated in lower layers. When a species develops roots disproportionate to its size, this is rarely random. A good exercise is to observe the plant's behavior during periods of drought. If it remains firm while others wither, 
Something is sustaining this vigor. Geologists and prospectors observe exactly this, but almost never explain it simply. The secret lies in connecting small signals, resistance, coloration, location, and repetition. Each detail alone may seem common, but together they form a pattern that is difficult to ignore. It is at this point that knowledge ceases to be curious and becomes applicable. If all of this is already changing the way you see the plants around you, leave a like now and comment below if you've noticed any plants growing strong where nothing else grows. The exchange of observations transforms individual learning into collective intelligence. A mentor knows that no one learns completely alone. Share in the comments what you see in your backyard, on the road, or in the field, because someone might recognize a sign there that you haven't yet noticed. And stay tuned, because when the plant's behavior becomes clear, the next step is to understand how the soil itself confirms, or denies, what the vegetation is silently trying to reveal. When we talk about indicator plants, we're not talking about distant theory, but about documented and applied history. In different parts of the world, entire regions have been mapped based on observations of vegetation. There are clear records of areas rich in copper and gold, discovered because certain plants insisted on growing where nothing else thrived, forming green patches almost like natural plaques embedded in the soil. In countries like the United States, Canada and Australia, this type of observation has guided serious geological studies and mineral prospecting decisions. Experienced explorers have learned that certain species don't appear by chance, but respond directly to the chemistry of the subsoil. A wise mentor often says that the earth doesn't hide its secrets, it only reveals them silently and consistently. These plants function as natural warnings, repeating the same message over the years until someone is willing to observe carefully. The most powerful aspect of these discoveries lies in the symbolism they carry. Nature doesn't point out treasures with obvious signs, but with subtle, almost humble details. These plants grow without fanfare, like living sentinels positioned precisely where the soil holds something different. For those who learn to interpret these signs, they become natural landmarks, indicating areas with specific mineral characteristics. It's as if the earth itself were saying, in a low voice, look here, more carefully. This understanding transforms not only knowledge about minerals, but also the way we perceive the surrounding environment. The observer begins to realize that valuable information rarely attracts attention immediately. It repeats itself patiently. And when this logic begins to make sense, a natural restlessness arises, preparing the next step. If plants already reveal so much, what can human experience itself learn by applying this attentive gaze to daily life? How many times has someone passed by a seemingly ordinary plant without imagining what it was silently trying to communicate? This is the point where external observation begins to transform into something deeper. Just like mineral treasures, life's best opportunities rarely shine at first glance. They hide in simple, repeated patterns ignored by most. A wise mentor often reminds us that learning to observe nature is, at its core, learning to observe oneself. When someone slows down, pays attention and connects the signals, they begin to realize that almost everything sends subtle messages, people, decisions, paths. The plant that grows alone in difficult soil becomes a living metaphor for persistence and silent intelligence. It's not just about finding something valuable in the earth, but about developing a more attentive gaze towards the world. This type of perception changes choices, expands possibilities, and creates a curious sense of alignment with the environment. And when this transformation happens, the question that leads to the next step naturally arises. How to apply this same conscious gaze to continue learning and evolving every day. If this knowledge has already changed the way you look at the plants around you, now is the time to turn curiosity into participation. Write in the comments, I observe nature, and tell us if you've ever seen a plant growing alone in an unlikely place. Your experience could open the eyes of many people. Leave a like now to support this type of content that almost no one explains.
and subscribe to the channel to continue learning to decipher the silent signs of the earth and pay attention to the screen. The next video is already appearing there. The tree that reveals where the emeralds are hidden. Discover it now. Click on it. Because understanding this tree might be exactly the missing step to connect everything you've just learned. See you later, Gemstone Hunter.